Hey guys, let's take a look at some charts on Grin from last week's article on Brave New Coin. So Grin is a proof of work, privacy focused coin where privacy is default, much like Monero. It was released at a very high issuance rate early last year. That issuance rate or annual inflation will continue to drop pretty quickly. That's currently around 83%, which is one reason why the chart looks like the way it does. If you are trading this, buying it, and hoping for it to go higher, you have to pay attention to things like the inflation because that will just kill any short-term store of value potential. So I think the best play, again, not investment advice, but the best play would be to just buy and hold it several years. If it becomes a thing, if it becomes a thing, if it doesn't, you don't lose any money. Ideally, you just dip your toe in, you know, you don't dive in head first in a five foot pool. Okay. You don't kill yourself thinking you're going to have a grin moon. All right, let's look, look at all these metrics, but <clears throat> you can see grins, you know, this orange one, put it on the bottom of everything. One thing that won't show up on this table is the fervent developer community. Grin is fully funded completely by the community. Unlike uh, Zcash, for example, DCR, they don't have a treasury. They don't have centralized governance they don't have a mix of decentralized and centralized governance they have complete decentralized governance ideally i don't think that'll go on forever but in the meantime that's how grin is being developed and again just like monero there's no daily active address amount there's no daily transaction value volume volume value because it's completely private it's obscured the idea is it sort of matches Bitcoin in many ways, but f adds on top of it uh, mimble-wimble privacy. So here's the issuance, the uh, annual inflation and the fill here. You can see it started, you know, at some insane value, trying to get distributed in the best way it could. It did not do an ICO. It did not do a pre-mine. So really, this is probably the best option because how else are you going to get coins to people quickly? You have to sort of build a community in some way, you know? And if people can't get a hold of the coin through an ICO, how else are they going to get it? They're going to get it through mining. It's going to start with a high issuance schedule. You can agree or disagree with that, but that's just what they chose. And again, it's currently around 83%. You can see this is the network difficulty. So to some degree, it's actually easier to mine now than it was a few months ago. But overall, the mining interest is certainly declined with price. So if you're mining this, you're probably mining at a loss regardless. And you're one of these long-term holder people who aren't focused on probably even 6 to 12 months, but more like 12 month plus outlook as far as buying and holding this in some way or mining and holding this. It's probably cheaper to buy it on the market than to mine it, but that might be wrong. I'd have to look at the, the numbers on that. The line here is transactions per day. And the fill is fees. So you can see fees are way down there, pretty low. Transactions per day also at the lower end of the historic range. I think these transaction spikes represent mining pool payouts or some mining pool related thing. Not really sure. But you can see in general transactions per day of range between 2,000 and 2,500. If privacy becomes a thing, a concern, more so than it is now, uh, I can see Grin becoming popular, similar to XMR. But in in the current world, I don't think enough people care. <laughs> I think people use Venmo without realizing that it's completely public. People use Bitcoin thinking it's anonymous and it isn't. So until people get educated, I don't think this transactions per day value is really going to spike up anytime soon. Looking at technicals, there's not a whole lot of price history. Just about a year's worth of price history for... Grin. This is Grin BTC on Poloniex. And unlike many of the other pairs on Poloniex, the volume is actually decent as far as where it is now compared to last year. So this is the 50 EMA, the 200 EMA in the red here. And then the, this is the volume profile of the visible range. And you can see that 11800 is basically the point of control or the median mean volume zone. So price is going to want to come up to that again. You can see on uh, a couple of months ago, I was talking about Grin, this Adam Eve potential that obviously failed. Anytime you have a pattern, 
there's two ways it can go. There's the expected way if completed, which this would be a bullish reversal if completed, or there's the failure of the pattern, which would be, in this case, a lower low below uh, the eve, below the atom, and that's what's happening now. What we are have seeing now uh, from a bullish reversal standpoint is a bullish divergence on RSI. You can see we're getting lower lows in price, higher lows in RSI. We're getting lower lows in price on lower volume. So it's another version of a bullish divergence. Again, because of the issuance and inflation, it's hard to really take TA at face value because at the end of the day, if somebody wants to mine this and just dump it continuously, that's what they're going to do. Similar to Zcash. I mean, the most bearish thing you can see is a slow bleed over multiple months. And this most likely represents the coin just being mined and sold. Agnostic miners, they don't care what the coin is. They don't care what the price is. They're just trying to get a return on investment in some way. I consider this strip mining <laughs> because the miners, again, they don't care, right? They don't need to care. They're just trying to get a re uh, return on their investment. And lastly, looking at the cloud for Grin BTC, I'd want to see it back above 11k sats basically. There's also a TKC clamp here. Uh, let me show a good, here's a good example of one that didn't actually pan out. So when you get the key June, this red line, and the Tenkin very far apart, you can think of it like an EMA mean reversion attempt in the making because this says it's really oversold and it's going to want to touch this red line, this key June, which is the mean at some point. And you can see this during this whole downfall, you get what's called a Tenkin bounce. So the Tenkin is rejecting this over and over and over and over again until finally it actually breaks above the Tenkin and then mean reverts to the Kijun. So similar here, what you don't want to see if you're bullish is a Tenkin bounce. So a rejection at this blue line, what you want to see is a return to the mean at the red line, stabilization recovery over probably multiple weeks, and then eventually... The long entry is going to be above 11k sats, the, the higher probability long entry. Any long entries here are just mean reversion. They're, they are bullish divergence based. They are knife catching based. They're not based in TA. TA says leave us alone <laughs> for the foreseeable future, at least on the trend metrics.